You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 29th of July. Incessant rain slash India's Jammu and Kashmir territory flood alert sounded in several areas. Elections to be held on time. Government to complete its tenure, says Pakistan Democratic Alliance. And displaced Afghans returned home with help of United Nations Refugee Agency. And after all the details, heavy monsoon rains continue to affect several Indian states, triggering landslides, causing widespread flooding and several weather-related incidents. Authorities have sounded flood alert in many parts of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory due to incessant rains this week, while efforts to rescue those trapped in floods continue. Authorities in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir rescued locals who were trapped in a rivulet in Chandak Bela area of Poonch after heavy rainfall triggered flash floods inundating many areas of the Jammu region on Thursday, officials said. As per reports, dozens of houses and structures suffered damage due to rains, flash floods and landslides in several districts. Several people were said to be half displayed due to the rainfall activities. Indian Army is leading efforts in rescuing those trapped in floods. Due to incessant rains, the water level of most of the rivers like Chenab, Basanta were running above the danger mark, forcing authorities to sound an alert in areas close to the rivers. DM Saab is supervising this. SSP Saab is sitting there, who is getting the support of the police. The SDRF team is with us. And the leading role in this operation is the Indian Army. Southern Telangana state also reeled under heavy floods this week as some areas saw water overflowing from a nearby river, swallowing roads and inundating houses. The city of Hyderabad faced the wrath of incessant rains which caused the Mosi River to swell up, giving way for authorities to open dams and let the water flow into the city. Meanwhile, incessant rainfall since Wednesday night has thrown life out of gear in several places in northern Himachal Pradesh. Horse owners in northern hill town of Shimla demanded the construction of shelters for their horses. As they said, heavy rainfall harms the health of the animals. Horse riding is a major tourist attraction in Shimla and neighboring Child Hill Station in the region. Hundreds of horse owners depend on tourists who visit the town and Shimla's ridge to escape the harsh hot summers. And India said on Thursday it was aware of reports about the planned visit of a Chinese vessel to a Sri Lankan port built with money from Beijing, even as New Delhi tries to expand its influence in crisis hit southern Nepal. India, which is trying to expand its influence in crisis hit Sri Lanka after China made deep inroads there, said on Thursday it was aware of reports about the planned visit of a Chinese vessel to a Sri Lankan port built with money from Beijing. Shipping data from Refinitiv Icon showed research and survey vessel Yuan Wang 5 was en route to the southern Sri Lankan port of Hamantota and was expected to arrive on August 11. A Sri Lankan consulting firm, the Belt and Road Initiative Sri Lanka, says on its website that Yuan Wang 5 would be in Hamman Tota for a week. The government carefully monitors any development having a bearing on India's security and economic interests and takes all necessary measures to safeguard them. Sri Lanka formally handed over commercial activities in its main southern port to a Chinese company in 2017 on a 99-year lease after struggling to repay its debt. The port is near the main shipping route from Asia to Europe. U.S. and Indian officials have been concerned that the $1.5 billion port could become a Chinese military base. As Sri Lanka now battles its worst economic crisis in seven decades, India this year alone has provided its support of nearly $4 billion. US dollars. Meanwhile, the World Bank on Thursday said that it does not plan to offer new financing to Sri Lanka 
until the Indian Ocean nation has an adequate macroeconomic policy framework in place. The bank is repurposing resources under existing loans to help alleviate shortages of essential items such as medicine, cooking gas, fertilizers, meals for children and cash for vulnerable households, it added. Sri Lanka has been in the state of emergency since July 13 after popular protests forced Rajpaksa to flee the nation, first to the Maldives and then Singapore. He has been replaced as president by Ranil Vikramasinghe, who was the prime minister. In news from Pakistan, repuffing PTI chairman Imran Khan's demand, Maulana Fazlur Rahman, chief of opposition alliance PDM on Thursday said that Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif-led coalition government would complete its constitutional tenure and the next general elections will be held on time. Fazlur also announced that the alliance would launch a public campaign against the Supreme Court decision on the Punjab chief minister's election. Maulana Fazlur Rahman, chairman of Opposition Alliance, PDM, Pakistan Democratic Movement, announced on Thursday that the next general elections would be held on its scheduled time next year. The alliance would launch a public campaign against the Supreme Court decision on the Punjab chief minister's election, Fazl said. The Supreme Court on Tuesday ruled to hand control of the country's most populous and politically crucial Punjab province to Chaudhry's Parvez Ilahi, leader of PMLQ, and Analdi PMLN's Hamza Shehbaz as the Punjab chief minister. The PDM passed a resolution saying that Epic Court's ruling had created confusion, leading to a constitutional and political crisis in the country. The meeting was chaired by Fazil and attended by the leaders of all the constituent parties. आज के इजलास में इस बात को वाजह कर दिया गया है कि इलेक्शन अपने वक्त पर होंगे हकूमत अपना वक्त पूरा करेगी रहमान डिमांडेड एन अर्ली वर्डेड ऑन ऑपोजिशन पाकिस्तान तहरीक इंसाफ प्रोहिबिटेड फंडिंग केस फ्रॉम द इलेक्शन कमीशन Earlier this week, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif also urged the poll body to take action against Imran Khan's PDI in the case, saying that for long the ousted Premier has been given a free pass despite his repeated and shameless attacks on state institutions. Moving on, a third spell of heavy monsoon rains has wreaked havoc across Pakistan, especially in the southwestern province of Balochistan. Families have been left stranded in deep waters without any food or drinking water and with little signs of a rescue plan, local media reported from the remote Uttal region of the province on Wednesday. The National Disaster Management Authority issued a statement saying 106 people, including women and children, had died in the floods in Balochistan and 62 people in Injured. The authorities have said rescue efforts in the last couple of days had been slowed down by the severe weather conditions. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Met Office has predicted heavy rains and thunderstorms across most parts of the country till Sunday. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's economy collapsed last year and thousands fled after foreign forces withdrew and the Islamist Taliban took over the country. Around 3.4 million people were displaced within the country. Some Afghans displaced following conflict in the country were on Thursday assisted by the United Nations Refugee Agency in returning to their home provinces. The Refugee Agency worked in cooperation with the local repatriation ministry to return 229 families to various provinces. Some Afghans displaced following conflict in the country were on Thursday assisted in returning to their home provinces. Buses lined a United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR compound in capital Kabul, as the refugee agencies worked in cooperation with the local repatriation ministry to return 229 families to various provinces, according to a Taliban official. So uh, today this is a movement of some 230 families, so about 1,600 people who are going back. But overall this week we've had 5,500 internally displaced persons leave Kabul uh, for their homes in provinces throughout the country. Uh, these are people who've been displaced, some of them for many years due to the conflict, and who now feel safe to go home. <laughs> Uh, 
Each family was also provided with $200 to cover transportation costs, according to a UNHCR spokesperson. The war-torn country's economy collapsed last year and thousands fled after U.S. and other foreign forces withdrew and the Islamist Taliban took over the country. Afghanistan has around 3.4 million people displaced within the country, according to UN figures, and around 2.6 million refugees outside the country. Well, in a unique individual feat, a UK-based Indian mechanical engineer, Ashok Ali Saral Thamarakshan, put together his skills to test and successfully manufactured a four-seater airplane for his family. Citing COVID restrictions and absence of sophisticated private airplanes as reasons behind his motivation, Ashok has set an example before the world. An UK-based Indian mechanical engineer, Ashok Alisir Althama Rakshan, made the best use of his time during the COVID-19 pandemic and built a four-seater airplane. Named after his youngest daughter, Dia, the metallic red-colored G Dia can reach about 250 km or 155 miles in an hour. 38-year-old Thama Rakshan, who is also a private pilot and works for Ford Motor Company in Essex, dreamt of engineering a personal aircraft to take his family on trips and feared flying rental planes, which he said are usually old and unsafe to fly. He said he had initially planned to order an aircraft kit and build it with his colleagues in his home. But the 2020 lockdown left him with no choice but to complete it by himself. When I got back to the UK in the beginning of 2020, placed the order and um, kind of the lockdown happened at the same time around April when I received the first kit. So there was a plan that some of my work colleagues will help out with the build. But in the end, because of lockdown, that couldn't happen. I ended up doing most of the work myself. Tamar Rakshan built his aircraft at a cost of 225,790 US dollars and it took 18 months to finish his project. Tamar Rakshan flew across four European countries with his friends and has also gone on a trip with his family after getting clearance to fly. An Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's clarion call on rebranding the Indian toy story has led to government interventions that have helped the industry boost exports and discourage imports. India imposed new regulations on the quality of imported products, which has resulted in a decline in Chinese imports. Indian toy industry is witnessing a boom after the country imposed new regulations on the quality of imported products which has resulted in a decline in Chinese imports. Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, the country's standard body, announced new regulations for trade imports of toys in 2020, which China failed to meet. This surged India's manufacturing rate of toys and swelled up its export to other nations. The toy makers in India say after the cutback on imports from China, they are now making the toys indigenously, while aiming to match the Asian manufacturing giant's export rates. China is by conservative estimate approximately 100 to 150 times India's size in toy production. So for India to outperform China is rather difficult feat right now. However, we can give competition to China in the international and Indian market for sure. For this, uh, what the support we need from the government is to give us a level playing field when it comes to the pricing of toys. China used to account for a large percentage of toy imports in India till August 2020, when Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi called for rebranding the Indian toy story. ये सारे प्रोडक्ट्स पहले हम लोग चाइना से इंपोर्ट करके यहां पे सेल आउट करते थे अभी हम सब लोग यहां पे ही हम लोगों ने मैन्युफैक्चर करने शुरू कर दिए हैं 2020 में एक बीएस आया था हमारी ट्रेड के ऊपर खिलौने इंडस्ट्री के ऊपर बीएस आया था बीएस के बाद कोई भी खिलौना इंपोर्ट नहीं हो पाया क्योंकि चाइनीज खिलौने बीएस पे पूरे नहीं उतर रहे थे उनकी क्वालिटी में प्रॉब्लम थी तो हम लोगों ने उसको यहां पे मैन्युफैक्चर करना शुरू किया और अब हम लोग वो सब कुछ बना रहे हैं जो हम लोग सब इंपोर्ट करते थे इंडिया स्टॉक एक्सपोर्ट्स हाइक्ड बाय 61.38% बिटवीन 2018 एंड 2021 the toy industry makes for a major contributor to the Indian trade, with 158 million children belonging to the 0 to 6 year age group. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. You're watching Tag TV. Number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV. Tag TV tags you news, views, and entertainment.